the United Nations COP26 Climate Change Summit came to Glasgow. Leaders from around the world gathered in the city. Glasgow Caledonian University played its part, showcasing its wide-ranging work to tackle the climate emergency and deliver climate justice. At the Scottish Exhibition and Conference Centre and at the Glasgow Science Centre, the university hosted four events at the heart of the summit, promoting discussion and progressive policy development, covering gender, climate finance, social innovation and mental health. Recognising and supporting those who are on the front line of the climate crisis is a moral duty and obligation, particularly by the world's wealthiest and world's largest economies, who have benefited enormously from industrialisation. The injustice is clear. I don't need to tell you how important this COP26 is. The decisions we make will determine what kind of future we bestow on generations to come. And it should be absolutely clear to everyone that gender equality must be an integral part of that future. On our Glasgow campus, we hosted the Global Health and Climate Conference, bringing together leading figures like Dr Tedros Adhanom, the Director General of the World Health Organisation, and the former Prime Minister of Australia, Julia Gillard. We can rise to meet the challenges of climate change together if every action we take is part of a greater whole. That's why the world urgently needs a global strategy on climate and health. We were home to the United Nations Resilience Hub. We hosted a pollution pod that created the air of the future to highlight the ongoing threat of pollution. We screened two hard-hitting documentaries to high-profile guests about the impact of climate change and we welcomed the First Minister onto campus to promote free bus travel for under 22s from January 2022. We projected stunning footage of the Atlantic Ocean by artists Elizabeth Ogilvie and Robert Page onto the George Moore building. It's really cool, it's brilliant that the university has drawn some attention to the climate crisis. And welcomed some of the biggest names in the sustainable fashion industry to the university to promote upcycling, take part in repair shops and share their expertise with the GCU community. I think it's just really important to sort of make it a bit more circular, to keep reusing the garments to stop them going into landfill basically. But our COP26 legacy goes beyond policy and promoting sustainability. We want to support our young people so they can make change happen in the years ahead. Schoolgirls from Glasgow visited GCU in the fortnight long Girls at COP26 in partnership with Glasgow City Council so they could learn more about climate change and have their voices heard. I'm really excited to be here at Girls at COP26 and I think it's really important for everybody to be here and get involved and I'm really excited for everybody to have their voices heard. Pupils from Smithcroft and St Margaret Mary's Secondary Schools signed Glasgow's Children and Young People's Climate Charter. The Charter is aimed at protecting children and young people from the impacts of climate change. Our students developed a series of video games to teach players about the consequences of climate change, while our engineering students created a flat pack wind turbine to be showcased in the summit's green zone. We sought to inspire and empower our own leaders and communities through our special COP26 Common Good podcast series, which included interviews with scientists, engineers and activists and our Chancellor, Dr Annie Lennox, OBE. I'm extremely passionate about our young generation. They must inherit the earth and it must be a good place for our children and grandchildren and future generations. Otherwise, we have no future here on this planet. COP26 in Glasgow might have lasted just two weeks, but its legacy at GCU and beyond will be felt long into the future.